the HR diagram. We have already studied the properties of our star. We know that it's a medium-sized star. It has a yellow color, a middle temperature based on the stars in the universe, and it's in the main sequence part of its life. We've also looked at other stars that are out there. Blue giants, red giants, white dwarfs, and look, know that these are all in different phases of their life or main sequence stars of different sizes. This is a copy of the HR diagram or Hertzsprung Russell diagram. It is taking stars and plotting them based on two characteristics, their luminosity or their brightness and their temperature. What you can see is that there are natural patterns of these stars. Let's go into a little bit more depth of how this is created. So first, across the bottom, we actually have our temperature uh, spans. It goes from cooler on the right to hotter on the left. The cooler stars are going to be red in color. So we have our red, our orange, our yellow, our white stars, and finally our hot blue stars. Because the color of the star is determined by the temperature of the star, as we're looking across the bottom, we are looking at both the temperature and the color of the star. On the left-hand axis, we have the star magnitude. The stars on the bottom are dimmer, the stars on the top are brighter. So let's take a look at these middle stars that are highlighted. Where could we get a band of stars ranging from cool, dim stars to hot, bright stars? So when we look at our life cycle of a star, where would these stars actually come from? Well, the one type of star, the main sequence star, has multiple sizes of stars involved in it. We have our small red dwarfs, our medium stars like our sun, and our blue-white supergiants. Our red dwarfs are small, dim stars, and cooler, and they are red. Our medium main sequence stars are medium-sized, medium brightness, medium temperature, and yellow. And finally, our blue giants are very large, very bright because of their size. They are very hot, and they are blue stars because of their temperature. So as we go through and start looking at how they would fall on this chart, we first have our relatively cool dim stars. They are dim because of their small size. They are cool, therefore going to be red stars. Then we have our medium stars, medium temperature, medium brightness. The medium temperature causes them to be yellow in color. And finally, as we're plotting on here, we have our relatively hot stars and bright stars. They are relatively hot, therefore being blue, white in color, and they are very large stars, therefore they're going to be bright. The bigger the star, the brighter the star. These are going to be your main sequence stars. So as we're looking at a different version of the HR diagram, you'll see the sun is labeled there in the middle. You see our main sequence stars labeled there. Next, we have relatively cool large stars. So as we go back to our life cycle of star, what type of stars are large, bright, and relatively cool, red in color. That takes us to our red giants and our super red giants. They're going to be bright because of their tremendous size. The bigger the star, the brighter they are going to be in the night sky. But because that core is heating up a very outermost layer, they're going to be red in color. So they're not going to be very hot. So we plot our main sequence on here. And then we go and look at our rel relatively cool, relatively bright stars. This is where our red giants are on our map. So looking at this HR diagram, 
we have our main sequence stars down the middle, and we have our red giants. But what are those bottom stars down there on that left-hand side? Let's go back to our life cycle of a star. What stars on here are relatively dim, meaning they're going to be small, but relatively hot, blue and white stars? That's going to be our white dwarfs. Remember that a white dwarf is taking helium and forming carbon, producing tremendous amounts of energy. The color of these stars are going to be white-blue because of the temperature. But because they are so small, they are dim in the night sky. So as we plot this information, we have our main sequence through the middle, we have our red giants, and then finally, we have our relatively hot, relatively dim stars, which are our white dwarfs. So as we look at our map, we now go through, we can see all of the different parts. So let's take a look at the life cycle of the sun and plot where it would be on the HR diagram. To begin with, our sun is a medium-sized main sequence star. We will find it on the HR diagram in that yellow section of the area that goes from the top left-hand side to the bottom right-hand side. Our sun will not move through that part of the graph. It will always be in the same location. It's going to be a yellow star of medium temperature, medium brightness. Then, as our star begins to die, it goes into its red giant phase. As it goes into its red giant phase, it cools down. Therefore, you can see it moving to the right-hand side of the graph as it cools down. But it also will get larger, becoming brighter in the night sky. Therefore, what you're seeing is it's moving up in the luminosity. So our sun, as it dies, will go from being a main sequence star to the red giant. Finally, those outer layers are going to be blown off as it turns into a white dwarf. That white dwarf is going to be very dim, but much hotter. And what you're seeing here is how our star is, cool, is heating up, but you cannot see it as much. So our star will move through this HR diagram through its lifetime. It will be located in three different places. What you're looking at on that HR diagram is stars in different parts of it, their lifespans. Some are main sequence, some are in their red giant phase or super red giant phase, and others are in their white dwarf phase. So our sun is in this location right now as a main sequence star. It will jump up to a red giant and then eventually we'll move back down to a white dwarf. This time frame takes a long time to occur. It will not happen very quickly. Our main sequence part of our life is going to be about 10 billion years.